Good morning and welcome to your Farm and Home Show. I'm Christy Shive and this morning we're visiting with Ann Hall Norris. She's the Food Preservation Extension Specialist for the University of Kentucky. Good morning, Ann Hall. Good morning, Christy. Thanks for having me. I'm so glad you're here because you're going to talk to us about freezing and freezing is such a great way to preserve food. Yes, it is. It's actually my favorite way. It is uh, less time consuming than canning or drying and, it, and it's also very easy. And then some of my favorite vegetables like corn, green beans and peas are much easier to freeze than they are to can. So it is my favorite method. I love being able to experience corn all throughout the year. And yes. so today let's talk about some helpful hints that you have for us. Yes, so when you start freezing, you wanna make sure that you purchase the proper materials to freeze in like freezer wrap or freezer paper and then freezer bags. Um, you wanna wrap the food tightly when you freeze it and you want to cool it quickly. You don't want to slowly freeze your food because ice crystals will develop and that will lead to freezer burn, which we'll talk about in just a minute. Um, but I also wanted to mention that pre-treating your uh, fruits and vegetables is especially important when freezing because um, it will cause less damage over time when they're in the freezer. Now, you and I were talking beforehand about freezers and the different types that there are. Yes, you can purchase a chest freezer or an upright freezer and both have pros and cons. It, it's really a matter of preference and how much space you have. So your upright freezer is gonna take up less space in the basement or the garage, um, and they're easy to see in when you open the door. But you are letting out quite a bit of that cold air when you open the door in, a, in an upright freezer. If the chest freezer um, is a little bit more expensive. It's also more efficient, but you have to bend over to get in it. It's hard to see in it, so you really have to make a little bit more effort to organize that chest freezer. But the good thing to keep in mind is that whichever freezer you have, you can still make it work. Now, you mentioned freezer burn, and that is definitely something that we want to prevent. So what are some tips that you have for us in preventing that? Okay, so freezer burn is actually when air is trapped between the package and the food. And as that air evaporates, as the product freezes, it'll leave a little dry, a little dry pocket or a white spot on the meat or on the fruit or vegetable. And it's just unattractive. It's, it's actually damaged tissue in the food product. And so it's still safe to eat, but the texture is going to be different in that area. So you'll want to cut that out before you cook it or eat it. And some tips are to uh, wrap the food tightly, try to get out as much air as possible when you freeze, and then take an additional step after it's wrapped and put it in a freezer bag or a, a thick plastic container with a tight fitting lid. Another tip is um, if you find uh, meat on sale at the grocery store and you purchase several packages, don't just throw it in the freezer in that plastic wrap and styrofoam tray. You wanna take it out of that and wrap it and package it properly. You'll get a, a longer life in the freezer out of that if you do it correctly. Now, if someone is interested in freezing and they want more information, what resources do we have? Oh, every extension office has a publication on freezing food and how to freeze food. And then we also have storage, uh, a publication on storage times. So they can print those pubs out for you and let you take them home. All right, great. Well, Ann Hall, thank you so much for being here today. I know a lot of people have produce that they are excited about preserving. So if you're watching and you have any questions on freezing foods, be sure to contact your local extension office. Thank you so much for watching and we hope you have a great day.